This right here is Connor Bedard, a player who is slated to be the next face of the NHL. This, well, I, I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is or that. And this, who the hell is that? If we take a look at the last four quote unquote generational centers, four first overall picks, four guys who have separated themselves from the rest. We have Sidney Crosby from 2005, Connor McDavid in 2015, Austin Matthews in 2016, and Connor Bedard in 2023. As Crosby had an astonishing 102 points, McDavid in his rookie season, before his season ending injury, was on pace for 87 points. Matthews would finish with 40 goals, 69 points, nice. And Bedard before his recent injury, was on pace for 31 goals, 69 points, nice again. So from face value, these franchise, if not generational talents, live up to expectations if not surpass them. They would all fall in the same category in terms of rookie season production. Now of course, Crosby was in a league of his own. However, Bedard's situation could not be more different. Because heading into this past offseason, after trading away to Brinkett, Kirby Doc, Patrick Kane, and with the Jonathan Taves long-term injury, this team... Well, I'll be straight to the point, this team was horrendous. But after drafting Connor Bedard, the Blackhawks management would make some valiant efforts in recruiting some players, as they would add Taylor Hall to be a skilled winger, Corey Perry and Nick Foligno to add depth and mentorship. But Taylor Hall would have a season-ending injury. Corey Perry, after an unknown incident, would get removed from the team. And Nick Foligno, who was sticking up for Bedard after a crushing hit, would break his finger in a fight. So add in the injuries of other key players including Seth Jones, Tyler Johnson, has led to Connor Bedard playing on an island, where his teammates would be bottom six if not AHL players on a contending roster. It has gotten so absurd that the Hawks current lineup has a cap hit of approximately 35 million. Meaning, if we take John Tavares' contract and combine it with the new deals of Nylander and Matthews, it would equal to more than the entire Blackhawks roster. Three players make more than an entire roster. But it doesn't stop there. The Blackhawks injury reserve list has a higher cap hit than their entire active roster. And again, we are not talking about a team like San Jose who hasn't won a franchise player in the lottery. We are talking about a team who's already won and drafted that generational talent. So the fact that Bedard has continued to produce on par with a guy like Austin Matthews is a miracle. And to summarize this, I had to make a graphic to demonstrate the absurdity that we are currently witnessing. On the x-axis, we have rookie year point production. On the y-axis, we have the combined point production from the top five players on their team. Here we have Austin Matthews, who clearly had better depth. Next, we have Sidney Crosby, whose incredible rookie season was helped by a great roster. And if you were to guess where Bedard falls on this graph, where would you say? Okay, well, Connor Bedard as it stands would fall about right here with an 82 game pace. Also, keep in mind that the top five scores referenced on the y-axis does not include Matthews, McDavid, Crosby, or Bedard. So what does this mean? Well, it means that without high-end teammates, Connor Bedard is producing at a generational level. This is something that we have never seen in the history of the game. And it makes you think, if this guy had a Mitch Marner or Leon Dreisaitl, would he be on pace for 90 to 100 points? In fact, if we average the production totals of each team's top 5 scorers, it would equal to about 304 points, which is 37% higher than the production of Bedard's teammates. Now, this is completely hypothetical, but if this did translate to Bedard having 30% higher point production, Bedard's numbers would be closer to 110 points. Again, this is hypothetical that the fact that Connor Bedard is on a near 70 point pace is a miracle. And if he had better line mates, he would without a doubt be scoring at a much higher rate. And the way he scores his points proves this theory. Out of Bedard's 15 goals this season, only one of those goals was scored on the power play. 93% of his goals have come 5-on-5. Five five. And when you're scoring at that high of a rate, 5-on-5, five five, on top of not having a Marner, Nylander, Leon Dreisaitl to feed you the puck, 
we now have to bring up the concept of spacing, which basically means that a player draws so much attention that he creates space and time for their teammates. And the term spacing is frequently brought up in basketball. As Steph Curry is a prime example of someone who constantly creates space. Curry. What a handle. And a no look for Harrison Barnes who's going to the line. On this play, Steph Curry drives to the basket where he would draw three defenders to him. And because of this, he finds a wide open man under the basket. Because Steph Curry is feared from his ability to make baskets from anywhere, he creates gravity that pulls the opposition toward him. In the NHL, we have an Alex Ovechkin. Like seriously, NHL teams have seen his one-timer for nearly two decades. They study his one-timer and constantly cheat towards Ovi to take it away. And not only does it somehow still go in, but because Ovechkin creates spacing, it can also allow him to fake a shot and make a pass for a goal. And because the Capitals in the past have had guys like Backstrom or Semen, Seaman, I don't, I don't know, defenders have to constantly weigh the pros and cons in real time. Should I cheat to Ovi, or would this open up the ice too much for a guy like Semen? On this two-on-one chance, Ovechkin gets open for a one-timer. Because he's Ovechkin, the goalie fully commits to him shooting, but he doesn't, makes a great pass for an easy tap-in. But again, if you don't have a team with players, you can finish plays on a consistent basis. All of this pressure gets directed to you, or Bedard. So unless you're a special player who has pinpoint precision, most players in Bedard's position would struggle. On this play, the Blackhawks are on the power play. Felino makes a nice across ice pass to Bedard, where two Tampa defenders cheat towards Bedard. Why? To eliminate his shot. But it doesn't matter. Bedard's shot compensates. Most players would not be able to convert on this shot. But because Bedard has a special release, he can. And for many of Bedard's goals, he is the sole creator of that play. A trait he shares with special players like McDavid, as they can constantly create high danger chances out of nothing plays. On this play, we see a standard offensive zone possession for the Oilers. And aside from Tyson Berry setting a pick, the Hurricanes have the defensive advantage. He circles up to the top. The Oilers defenseman realizes if he skates toward the net, he'll take another defender out of the play. But as it stood, McDavid still has a trailer and two defensemen right in front of him. And for most players, this play would end right here. Maybe they try to shoot, maybe it gets blocked, maybe they cycle the puck in the corner. But for McDavid, he would make his own space and play. As this right here is the definition of a game breaker where special players can take routine possessions and convert them into goals. And not to throw a stray at the Flames, this is a main reason why they have struggled this season. They have the depth on top of a great defensive core, but they are missing a game breaker, which has resulted in many one goal losses in games they probably should have won. But back to Bedard. On this two on one chance against Tampa, we can see the defensemen take away Bedard's shot lane which in many cases would lead to the goalie cheating towards the other shooter, as he would know that pass is coming. But because he sees Bedard coming down the ice, the goalie refuses to cheat. Bedard still makes a cross crease pass, where the Hawks would score. And again, if this role was reversed and Bedard was looking for the backdoor pass, nine times out of 10, that goalie would cheat towards Bedard and probably make the save. And on this next play, during a standard defensive zone breakout, Bedard sneaks his way in, turns over the puck, and creates a goal out of a nothing play. And unless you're a special player, you are not scoring from this angle. Hell no. But it once again shows, Bedard has the ability to create plays out of nothing on a team with little to no support. What Bedard is doing this season has never been seen in NHL history. The channel is getting so close to 100K, oh my goodness. And you would make my day by helping me get there. Big shout out to Riley for editing this video. And as always, thanks for watching.